Occam's razor. The simplest, most logical solution is usually the correct one. I had problems with traction today and I was calling up the office and I was explaining that I was losing traction at certain points and it was slipping out when I was trying to climb hills and we were like, oh, well, what about the tyres? What about the traction control? Try turning this off and this back on and doing all of this sort of thing. We're trying all of this, brought it back to the yard to try and figure out what's actually going on with it. Turns out there's a hole in the fuel just here. Did you see that? And the fuel is leaking out onto the drive axle and it's slipping because of that. So that's the reason why it's happening. I am Tom, otherwise known as the Big Daddy. This is Except for Access, and that is a Griggs I'm not able to go into because I don't have time. Yeah, my life is harsh right now. And that is someone taking a picture of my truck. Finally, ah, oh, it's taken so long. I, I've been driving white Mercedes everywhere. I'm finally getting people taking pictures. And if you do watch it except for access, hello, how are we doing? Yeah, you're on camera. So I've just seen a police chase go flying, uh, the, this, this guy going flying past me. I think he had like a fuel bowser on or something like that, but a massive one. I didn't think, why is he in lane three or lane four, should I say? Um, but uh, yeah, basically the police chasing him. That's that. Well, I'm assuming they're not chasing him for being in lane four. I'm assuming he was in lane four to get away from the police. And I don't know if this is really naive of me, but before I got into trucking, I always thought, well, when I thought getting into trucking, I thought I'd see police chases all the time. You don't. It's very, very, very rare. In fact, I think that's only like the third one I've seen since I've started. Yeah, maybe. And you only kind of catch glimpses of it, or you're like, oh, was that a police chase? I guess a question out to you guys. Did you think that you were going to see police chases? If you're in trucking, if you're not in trucking, do you expect to see a lot of chases? And have you seen a lot of chases? Um, yeah, I don't know. There you go. That's your questions. It's Tuesday, and I am very tired right now. It's just coming on to three in the afternoon, and I am exhausted. Um, I'm not going to mention um, the person's name, but someone, one of my one of my, one of my wonderful colleagues, decided it was a good idea to plan this whole day out where we got up at, well, I had to get up at quarter to three in the morning. This is to get all the runs done. And I went along with this, this plan, and I'm not going to mention her name, Katie, but Katie, you're a bad person. I, I dislike you at the moment. Um, oh. My body's not. I mean, I'm used to waking up early times. Obviously, by doing tipping, you do. But my God, I'm so tired. I am exhausted. It's definitely been a Red Bull day. That's <laughs> that's for sure. And Katie, I'm sure you sat there feeling very happy that you've got a mention on the channel and all of that. You did ask for one, but this is not a, this is not a mention. This is not a shout out. This is me saying that you are a terrible person and you should really feel bad about that. So this week's topic is confirmation bias. And before Ashley puts in the comments, oh, Big Daddy knows big words. Yes, I know big words. I even know what it means. I search for it. I Google it. <laughs> confirmation bias is basically when okay so my first my original explanation of this is just shocking it's awful confirmation bias is a tendency to search interpret favor and recall information in a way that confirms or supports like your own beliefs like what what you already think and that's like a fancy way of saying if you've assumed something and you know a little bit of information you're like yeah yeah that checks out We'll do that. It wasn't that bloody bad, was it? Oh, it was absolutely awful. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. So before we get onto this, let me show you a picture that I've seen on a Facebook group. I can't remember which which Facebook group, but one of these Facebook groups where someone does some at daft and this guy does do some at daft and everyone rips into them for it because as an industry, we are just that lovely, aren't we? So this absolute pillock has decided that he's going to turn around in a field, in an Arctic, a fully freighted Arctic at that. And I'm sure you can see the comments. 
and about what he's been doing and how silly he is and all of that kind of thing. And essentially, he is the biggest idiot in the HGV industry, allegedly. But what if he wasn't? I originally what looked at the video or looked at the, the, the picture, should I say, and I, when I looked at it, I had the initial reaction of everyone else, of like, what an idiot, I can't believe he's done that, it's so stupid. But when I think about it, I, is it as stupid as it looks on first glance? And that's what I want to explore. Okay, let me give you another example of confirmation bias. And this is a, a, a purely hypothetical scenario. It's not something that actually happened. Well, so let's say I was tipping in a bunker. I back up to the bunker, but the bunker's empty. There's hardly anything in it. So I think I'll, I'll back right up to the back wall and I'll tip there. At the end of the day, I'm trying to be helpful. I'm trying to be nice. Why do all my bad stories start off? I was trying to be helpful. Why is it every freaking time? Regardless, and again, this is hypothetical. I'm not saying I broke anything. I'm, this is a hypothetical scenario that could happen, but hasn't happened. Definitely hasn't happened. I'm in this bunker and I look to the opposite roof because they're gonna be the same level, aren't they? Obviously they are. There's no need to look up directly if they're the same level. So I've confirmed, yep, not a problem at all. These are the same level. I can crack on with the tip. So as I'm at full height, I hear this crunching noise. And again, this is hypothetical. And when I look out my window and I look up, I realize, oh shit, these roofs are not the same height. One of them is lower than the other one. I've hit the roof, that roof, and there is a reasonably sizable hole. Yeah, that hole up there. And although I do have a past history for attacking cladding, I do need to reinforce, this is just a scenario. I'm not saying that this happened. Okay, so joking aside, how have I made this mistake? What have I done to, to think that I was gonna be okay tipping in this place? I've tipped there quite a few times and I've never had problems with, well, hitting the roof. And I know that because I haven't hit said roof. See, going in there, I do look, and the, the higher roof is the one that you look at as you draw in. It's the one on the, on the far side as such. And based on this, I've made an assumption. I've, I've assumed, because I've tipped in the other side, I've assumed that the other side is gonna be okay, the one I was tipping on this side. And by looking up, I've now confirmed. I've, I've got information, I've seen it, I'm like, yep, I, I can see that, that's all good, I can, I'm, I'm okay. I've, I've just checked it out, I've looked. And therein lies the issue. I've assumed something, and I've then confirmed that assumption by looking across and by remembering other things that I have done, which is a similar. And that is the trap. That, that, is, that is the very trap of confirmation bias, and that is why it, it, I think it, it can, I think it can knacker even the most veteran drivers. How does this affect our friend who decided to take the term tractor unit a little bit too seriously? Now obviously you should never under any circumstances ever drive on grass. It is a heavy goods vehicle, it's designed for the road, it is not designed to go on grass. Now this was something I was taught at Travis Perkins so I, I learned this very early on and that being said here's a video of me driving on grass. You're okay. You can see that pile off to the right there, that's where we're going. And here's a video of Scott Andrews driving on grass. Hopefully on the road, yeah. So here I am, ready to load. It's slightly dusty already. And now a video of Jono driving on grass. Yeah, normally it's easier if you go sort of past it, turn around and come back. <laughs> now some people are obviously ready in the comments about to say, well, actually they weren't fully freighted. You can see fence panels and stuff like that. Well, yeah, but in actual fact, I was fully freighted and I was driving on grass quite happily. The next thing people will say is, well, yeah, okay, fair enough, but it was dry when you drove on grass. But when that lad drove on the grass, it had been dry, been dry for about two weeks. So, I, 
I can kind of see where he was coming from. But the fact being, he should have got out and checked, but when you're under, under pressure, you're thinking, oh crap, I've just done this. I need to get to this site here. And we don't know what conditions he was under. We don't know what was going through his head at the time. And when, when, when stress is on you, when you're starting to kind of feel things are on top of you, yeah, you can, you can make a decision where you think, ah, oh, yeah, I'll do this, I'll do that. And it bites you in the ass. And it properly, properly bites you in the ass. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to justify what he did here. I'm just trying to give him the benefit of the doubt and I'm trying to kind of look at it in a sense of how has he made this mistake? What has he done? So I don't know if... I don't know if he kind of felt like this was the only place he could get turned. Um, maybe he'd gone the wrong way and he'd been traveling. I've done that before where I've traveled, I've gone the wrong bloody way and I've been traveling for like two, three miles and there's absolutely nowhere to turn. And you see this, you see something, and you're like, oh yeah, that, that seems like the, that seems like the jobby just there. And you screw it round and you kind of get back and that's all good. <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. These were all tarmac areas. They were all areas I could, maybe shouldn't have turned with some of them but <laughs> sometimes you, your choices the limited we can't always beggars can't be choosers and my word we are beggars sometimes <laughs> you should always avoid driving on grass this is not by the way this is not an endorsement for driving on grass oh my word no do not do this but there is one thing that each and every single one of the people that i've shown videos of they did one thing we asked the farmer the farmer is the person who knows the grounds because every different soil type is different if it's more clay or it's more sandy they all drain water faster they've got more compact in certain circumstances and so the farmer they know they know exactly how that ground's going to react and that is the person that you should always ask and i think that's where the mistakes kind of happen that it's that assumption that and again we don't know if you had all this information i mean don't get me wrong he could have just absolutely yoloed it and just gone yeah we'll just do that with no information at all but again we're giving him the benefit of the doubt here i would like to think that the there has at the very least been a thought process even that even though that thought process has gone <laughs> very very wrong by not asking that question by assuming that all this information i mean you do see trucks in fields picking up hay and all of a sort of thing so even if he doesn't watch youtube videos he will have still seen trucks in a field at some point and grounds dry why not it, it seems like the best option lots of place to get turned and that assumption it costs and it costs, I'm, I'm assuming, quite a lot of money as well. The only problem with this day return work is the, the schedules are so tight that if anything goes wrong, anything goes wrong, it just knackers the rest of the day and you, you're chasing your ass through the rest of it. and it, it just doesn't bloody work out well for you. <laughs> like today. Today's been one of them days. Can I go, can I go, can I go, can I go, can I go? I was doing really well throughout the day. Got a nice early start. Absolutely smashed it. I mean, I was, I was doing blindingly. Absolutely brilliantly. And then there was a wreck near Stoke-on-Trent. I don't, I, well, I assume that's what's happened. So there was something that happened near Stoke-on-Trent. I had to bloody divert. But I'd already kind of committed to a decision and it, yeah, essentially it just didn't work out well for me. You have to move up just a tiny little bit. So let's go back to my friend in the field and recap what the point of this video actually was. The point wasn't to defend the guy. I don't know him. And I think that's the point. You don't know the circumstances. You don't know what's actually happened. You don't know what's going through his head. You don't know the whys. You don't know if there's a, a, like a logic going into it. Yes, there was a cock up at the end of it, but I think we're all susceptible to them. And I think at that point when, I think that point when you, you think that you're, you're not susceptible to like cock up, when you, when you think that you're, you, you know it all and you've got all the information, I think that's when we're most susceptible to making the biggest blunders. I mean, don't know if they turn around and they tell you the story and they're like, yeah, yeah, this is what this happened, this happened, this happened. And you're like, wow, you're an idiot then that's fair, because you know all the information at that point, and they've told you. So my point, my point is this, we are getting a snapshot of this driver's absolute worst day, like, like one of the worst days of their entire driving career, and we're judging them entirely on that, and I'm not saying don't rib them, 
because let's be honest, they deserve it. If it was me, I feel like I would get, I would deserve a bit of ribbing. But also just remember, it could have been you. And go a little bit easy. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is a slightly different video for me. I've not done one quite like this before, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the, in the comments what you think of it. Uh, do you like it? Do you want to see more of this? If you're new to the channel and you like this, don't forget to subscribe. If you fancy, I've got merchandise. I've got t-shirts and all sorts. You can get that at salmonslap.com. There's a link in the description. And other than that, have a great day, and we shall see you next time.